So in episode 2, we're going to start to code. So I thought that we'd talk about how we're going to organize our code first before we get into it. We're going to organize our code into functions. At the beginning, there'll be a list of functions at the top of the document, and the functions will get called for each particular aspect. So a function might take care of the lights, a function might take care of the orbit controls, a function might create the ground, etc. Now what are the benefits of doing it this way? The first is debugging. If there's some sort of problem, it's way easier to fix when you know that a particular function does one specific thing. So for example, if there's a problem with the chase cam, I know to go to the chase cam function and I know where that function is located, rather than having your, all your code mixed up. Another benefit, if you want to make a new project, you can copy the functions that will work in that new project as is, and then just make up a new function for whatever new thing is in that particular new project. And another benefit is if you want to add to a project. So for example, if you want to add things to this land speeder project, all you have to do is make a function to do that. Maybe you want to make an enemy land speeder, or maybe you want to make something else appear in the scene, you just create a function to do that and you can add it to this project. That's why we're going to organize our code into functions in this project. Alright, so we are ready to code. So everything's the same here except I put a comment in here, declare variables. So we're going to declare all our variables in this section. We're going to put our list of functions in this section and then we'll add each function below that. I've also added my six skybox images. I got my skybox images from opengameart.org. The link for this web page is in the description below. If you open the folder, there'll be a blue one, a light blue one, and a red one. The red one has three different ones, so they're grouped by name, so there's six BKG1 images, and then there's six BKG2 images, and then there's six BKG3 images. But you can use any skybox images you want. And I just drag and drop those images into this folder. Okay, so let's start coding. Our first function will be for 3JS. So we're going to create our scene, our skybox, our camera, and our renderer. And we're going to call this function init scene. So the first thing we're going to do is create our scene. And then we're going to create our skybox. So I'm creating a new 3 cube texture loader to load the skybox images into the background object of the scene and I'm setting the path to the skybox folder. That way I don't have to put the skybox folder for every image of the skybox. Then we're gonna load the six skybox images in an array. That's why there's these square brackets around them. And the order of these images is important. You have to put the positive x-axis, the right hand side image first. You have to put the negative x-axis image the left side second, and then the top image or the positive y axis third, the negative y axis or the bottom fourth, the front, the positive z axis fifth, and then last the negative z axis last, and that's the back. So they have to be in this order. Then we're going to add our camera. We're going to add a new perspective camera, and we're going to add our field of view. That's the number of degrees from the top to the bottom and our aspect ratio and our near. The near is when the objects start appearing. Objects will start appearing one unit from the camera. And then our far. And we'll adjust this number when we need it. But after 100 units, the objects stop appearing in the camera. And then we're going to set the position of the camera at the x, y, z coordinates using the set method. Now we're going to change this later. I just want to set up the camera while we're building our world. And then when we add our chase cam, we will get rid of this line of code. And then we'll add our render. So we're going to create a WebGL render and set the anti-alias to true. That smooths the edges of the meshes. We're going to set the pixel ratio of our device. Now you may want this line or not depending on your skybox. If you want a brighter skybox, then I would change my output encoding to 3.srgb encoding. If you want it to make it look darker, then comment that line out or, or don't use it. Then we're going to set the size of the render, and that sets it to the output size of the canvas. And then we're going to add the render to the HTML document. So there's our first function. Now we just need to call it. If we scroll up to the top where our list of setup functions are, we're just going to put the name of that function. So now that function will be called. So you see I haven't declared these variables, so if you try running this you'll get an error. It's supposed to be let scene or const scene 
let camera or cons camera and same for the render so we have to do that in the declare variables section there we go the reason I'm doing this is because some of these variables are used in the other functions like scene we have to add every object to the scene so I need to use scene in other functions and since I'm declaring it in a function it's isolated in that function so by declaring it up here outside of the function it makes it a global variable that means all the other functions can use these variables all right on to our second function so this function will be called init world and it's going to create the canon world set the gravity of that world and start the canon debugger so here we're creating a new instance of the canon world and we're setting the gravity using the set method on the y-axis and see it's negative 10 that means gravity is going down you can set gravity in any direction you can set gravity on the x-axis or on the z-axis or multiple axes you can put gravity on all three axes if you want so I encourage you to fool around with that now let's set our Canon debugger so I'm creating a new instance of the Canon debugger and I'm passing in the scene the 3JS scene that we created above and the Canon JS world that we created up here and then I'm also passing in this object so I'm setting the color of the wireframes here so I'm setting it to white you can change it to any color you want and we are, I'm setting the scale to 1 so that means the wireframe will be the same scale as the bodies of the physics world so there's our init world function but again I haven't declared these as variables so I'm going to do that above in the global variable section and let's call this function in that list of functions at the top of the file Okay, so we've declared world and debugger in the global variables section and now let's call our function there we go so now we have two functions done we've set up our 3GS world and we've set up the canon world so to get the debugger going we need to set up the animate loop so that the wireframes are constantly drawn where the bodies are located so let's start working on our animate loop to get that going the first thing we're going to have to do is declare another variable and we'll call this time step that's equal to 1 divided by 60. This means that the physics world will be stepped every 1 60th of a second, as much as possible. If your machine can't handle that, then it'll be slower than that. And while we're here, let's call our animate function in our list of functions. And that way we can just go to the bottom of the file and create it. So the first thing we should do is update our Canon debugger. So the Canon debugger will be updated every time the animate function is called. Let's update our physics world. Okay, so the world will be stepped by that time frame, time step, that 1 divided by 60. And let's render our 3JS scene by passing in the scene and the camera to the renderer. And then we need to call this animate function again and again and again. So we're going to use the request animation frame to do that. See, animate is in brackets. That means it's going to call this function so it loops and loops and loops. Now if we start it there's nothing showing it's a white screen so there's an error so I'm just hitting F12 to get the console and it says cannot read properties of undefined line 86 render so if we look at that it says scene.camera so let's go to that first function init scene so the scene is good you see how I'm high I'm just putting my mouse over it and the cursor is over that bracket and this there's a box over this bracket that means this function init is only including everything in between these brackets. I did not include the render in this function. That's why there's an error. So I'm just going to move this bracket to the bottom of the renderer by holding Alt and pressing my down arrow key. There. Now the render is included in this function. So if we run it again, there we go. There's our skybox. Our skybox is showing. Now let's add some orbit controls so we can move it around. So above the animate function, let's start our orbit controls function. So I'm going to call this init orbit controls. And the reason I'm not including this, the orbit controls in the init scene, is I don't use orbit controls in every program that I use with 3JS. I might use first person controls. I might use fly controls. Like there's lots of different type of controls that you can use in 3JS. So if I want to use a different type of controls, I just add that function for it but this will always be my orbit controls function okay so I'm creating my new orbit controls I'm enabling damping which adds a deceleration effect when you spin it it will kind of act like a merry-go-round and I'm setting the damping factor to 0.05 and that just kind of adds a damping effect to inertia which is the resistance to change in velocity so 
you're setting a value to control how much it slows down and I'm setting a max distance of a thousand just so I can't zoom out really really far so let's call init orbit controls in our list of functions at the top here so I'm gonna put it above the animate function so init orbit control so we've called our function we need to add controls to our declare variable section so let controls now when we run it there we go now we can navigate our world cool all right so we just need to update the orbit controls in the animate function to get enable damping to work for the orbit controls so let's do that so let's scroll down to the bottom where the animate loop is and at the top of the animate loop we will add controls.update right on so we got quite a bit done in this episode we got our animate loop done we got our orbit controls added we got our Canon world started and debugger started and we added our 3GS scene. So in the next episode, we'll add our ground and we'll add a player body and we'll add key controls so we can move the body around in the world.